Games like Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter HD Remix, Soul Calibur 4, King of Fighters 12, Tekken 6, and Blaze Blue on the horizon. 2008 is steadily shaping up to be the year of the fist. But before you start salivating over what's around the bend, one must not forget likely the biggest of them all, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It's finally ready for its US tour, but can it possibly even begin to live up to expectations? Fighting games with tons of modes have always gone together like oil and water. But in Brawl, they're in perfect harmony. We can't think of any other fighter with this many ways to play. Players with a penchant for going at solo won't be too surprised with the return of classic, event match, and stadium mode. The three have been staples of the series in one form or another. What will raise some eyebrows, however, is the new subspace emissary mode, Brawl's one or two-player adventure feature. As the story goes, Nintendo's biggest mascots are under siege by a troop of biomechanical baddies. You have to travel through franchise-themed 2D levels with gorgeous tongue-in-cheek CG sequences sandwiched in between each one. Unsurprisingly, the subspace emissary plays out much like director Masahiro Sakurai's own line of Kirby games, where you're given a throng of levels to complete with a boss battle or two along the way. While the Emissary is a bit clunky and mundane to play, it unlocks various secrets like stickers, coins, which we'll get back to in a minute, and hidden characters. It's a valiant effort for what amounts to an extra, but the controls, while spot on for fisticuffs, are a bit awkward for the adventuring portions of a game. The stagnant stages don't fare all that well either, and repetition sets in quickly. It's mildly entertaining, and you'll have to force yourself through it to get to all the unlockables. It's a good thing there's Wi-Fi support. Otherwise, playing Brawl by yourself is a test of internal fortitude. <laughs> you have the option of playing with anyone, which randomly pairs you up with fellow brawlers online, or with friends, which draws upon Nintendo's infamous friend codes to do the matchmaking for you. Playing with anyone is about as simple as it gets. You log on, pick a character, and give the old punching bag a whirl while waiting for others to join. It's relatively hassle-free. What diminishes the experience somewhat is the lack of options. If you play with anyone, the rules are permanently fixed to two-minute rounds. If you choose to take up a team match, local teammates are out of the question. It's always you and a random online player, or in the worst case scenario, a computer-controlled partner. This is where friend codes step in. If you do happen to opt for a hosted friend code game, the options swell into what you'd normally expect from a round of Smash Brothers, the stock matches and all. The network code has its ups and downs. Generally, latency is pretty low, but we did connect to some games that were downright unplayable. As with all online games, your mileage may vary. Three. Super Smash Bros. Brawl's Wi-Fi mode is a great new addition, but if you really want to kick it old school with local multiplayer matches, the game's Brawl mode is still in full effect. Setting up match types, tournaments, and even special rules are all familiar options for Melee, but the new rotation feature ensures everyone gets equal time. As with Melee, collecting and unlocking go hand in hand. Some, like stickers that can be used to power up your characters in the subspace emissary, and coins that can be used in a minigame to shoot for collectible trophies, are easy giveaways. But some of the more arcane requirements for unlocking, like for certain hidden characters, stages, and music, are now defined in the game's challenge feature which delineates all of the game's secret objectives into a branching grid to track your progress. Once you're sitting pretty atop all your achievements, you can peruse the vault feature and gaze upon your stockpiles of stickers, trophies, screenshots, and replays. Or, you can always build custom stages or play on classic video game stages through the Masterpiece feature. Do a barrel roll! Save for a few gripes of missing third-party characters, sorry Mega Man, and a few cases of character cloning, Brawl's lineup of characters is the biggest and baddest congregation of video game victors, villains, and vixens to date. Newcomers like Wario, Diddy Kong, and Captain Olimar are welcome additions to the Smash Brothers roster, and bring their own interesting playstyles and abilities to the mix. The character roster is just as unique as the ways there are to unlock them. If it all hasn't sunk in by now, Super Smash Bros. Brawl is simply brimming with features. We haven't even mentioned them all here. The single player options are fairly forgettable, but if you're looking for a multiplayer party game, this one will keep the living room rocking for months to come. The series' percentage-based, stay-on-the-stage-at-all-costs formula hasn't changed one bit. 
Normal, Tilt, Smash, and Special Attacks have also returned, ensuring vets can jump right in and be competitive. The most noticeable tweak to the mechanics is the change to air dodging. It can no longer be directed, much less strung together to wave dash. Advanced players need not feel castrated, however. Air dodging still facilitates mind games plenty. Other advanced techniques like short jumping, spiking, dash, and chain grabbing are all present. Though the game offers several different controller schemes to use, you'll want to dust off your old GameCube controllers or try to hunt one down. The Wii Mote and Nunchuck setup is a bit unreliable, and the classic controller suffers from awkward placement of key buttons. Items have always played a big role in the Smash Brothers series, and Brawl is no different. Of the new items, the uber-powerful Smash Balls bring the most significant change of pace to the game. When they appear on screen, it's a mad dash to bust them open and unlock some of the most impressive attacks in the game. Much like the fatalities in old Mortal Kombat games, you'll be completely obsessed with seeing every final smash in the game. The Pokeball-like assist trophies are also among Brawl's notable new additions, which feature cameo appearances by some of Nintendo's most famous, and not-so-famous, sidekicks and underdogs. Super Smash Bros. Brawl goes farther than most fighting games in updating its play and successful strategies. The addition of the Smash Ball and the subsequent final smashes alone changes tactics considerably. Yet the foundation remains. Like any great game, it's simple to come to grips with, but there's a lot of depth for those who want to die. <laughs> Running in 480p, Super Smash Bros. Brawl sits pretty as one of the Wii's best looking games to date. Though it doesn't quite share the rich detail of something like Super Mario Galaxy, it speeds along at a constant 60 frames per second, a boon for fighting game fanatics with an eye for pixel-perfect timing. One downer is that the elaborate CG sequences fail to fill up the screen, but it's a minor quibble. Oh. Brawl's orchestral soundtrack features an eclectic mix of 200-plus remixed and remastered classic video game tunes. You can even adjust certain sliders to control how often you hear certain theme songs on certain stages. Super Smash Bros. Brawl is average, if you intend to play it by yourself. As a multiplayer game, it nears perfection. Though the subspace emissary is a disappointment, the fast-paced fighting, bountiful modes and customization options, and a deep set of hidden content to be unearthed, give it staying power that few other games possess. Toss in online play, new characters, and a whole new slew of match-altering mechanics, and you've got yourself all the ingredients for a smash hit. Oh, 